everybody, I'm Zaina from the Child Creativity Lab, and today we are going to be doing some challenges and experiments for the Imagination Celebration. Let's get started. We are going to do two really cool experiments with baking soda and vinegar. So the first experiment we're going to do involves about four ingredients and is super awesome and very easy to do. So the first thing that we're going to need is a muffin tin. We're also going to need a bit of baking soda, some vinegar, and some food color. The first step to this process is actually to put a towel down on the surface that you're working with because um, this might spill over the muffin tin and we don't want to get your table or your countertop dirty. So I'm just going to lay this towel down before I start. So now that we've got our towel down and we're ready to start, you're going to go ahead and take your baking soda and take about half a spoonful of baking soda and put it into one of your muffins. You can do um, as many as you want. I'm just gonna start with two for today. Um, now that you guys have your baking soda in your muffin tin, you can go ahead and add the food coloring. You can do whatever color you want and mix and match it up to make it super cool. After you guys put your food coloring in, go ahead and mix it up a bit with a spoon or something. Now that you guys have mixed the baking soda and the food coloring together, we're going to get on to the really cool part of the experiment where you pour the vinegar in. Because baking soda is a base and vinegar is an acid, when you mix them together, they create carbon dioxide and start to expand and form bubbles. This is really similar to the chemical reaction that happens when you shake a can of soda and open it. Are you guys ready to pour the vinegar in? Three, two, one. And now for the second one. The bubbles that you see are formed by the releasing of carbon dioxide from the mixture of the baking soda and vinegar. Wasn't that experiment super cool? We're gonna do another one that's very similar to it. Let's go to the second experiment. For this experiment, you're going to need some baking soda, some vinegar, some food dye, an empty water bottle, a balloon, and some markers. The first step of the process is to decorate your balloon however you want it. I found that it's a lot easier to decorate your balloon when you blow it up, so you go ahead and blow up your balloon, decorate it, and come back to the video. So now that you guys have decorated your balloon, go ahead and grab your plastic water bottle and you're going to go ahead and pour about half a cup of vinegar into the water bottle. So now that you guys have your water bottle filled with vinegar, you're going to go ahead and get your food coloring and put some into the bottle of whatever color you choose. Now that you guys have your food coloring and your vinegar, you're going to go ahead and put three to four teaspoons of baking soda into your balloon. It's a lot easier to do this if you have a funnel. Now that you have your baking soda in your balloon, you're going to carefully attach the top of your balloon to the top of the water bottle without letting any of the baking soda fall into the vinegar. Now that your balloon is attached to the top of your bottle, you're going to carefully tip the balloon so that all the baking soda falls in. Three, two, one. When the base that was your baking soda and the acid that is vinegar mixed together, it, ha it created a chemical reaction. This chemical reaction created a gas called carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide then caused the balloon to blow up and you're a really cool design to show on the balloon. I hope you guys enjoyed that experiment and let's go on to the next one. It's called, we're gonna be doing a rainbow in the jar density experiment. In this experiment, we're going to be exploring density by learning how to layer sugar water to make a rainbow. Before we start the experiment, let's really quickly go over what exactly density is. Density is used to describe how much space an object takes up, or its volume, in relation to how much matter is in that object, or its mass. If we have a really, really heavy object, but it's really small in size, that means that its matter is compact and that it has a very high density. If we have an object that's really big and spread out, 
but very, very light, that means that that object has a very low density because its matter is not compact. For example, let's look at this pillow. This pillow is relatively big, but it's very, very light, meaning that it has a very low density. Versus this textbook that's smaller than the pillow, but a lot heavier, meaning it has a higher density than the pillow. Another way you can think about what density is, is let's say you were having a pillow fright with one of your friends and you hit them with the pillow. It wouldn't hurt that much because the pillow is soft and has a very low density. Versus if you were to accidentally hit your friend with this textbook, because it has a really high density, it would hurt a lot. Now that you guys understand what density is, let's get on to the experiment. The really cool thing about this experiment is that it requires a lot of creativity. I'm gonna do the experiment, but it's only four colors, but you can change up those colors and you can even add more colors if you want. There's so much room to explore with this experiment and that's why I think it's so awesome. So let's get on to the materials. Because there's so much creativity involved in this experiment, you might have to make a few adjustments to the materials that you need. I'm doing only four colors, so I'm gonna need about four plastic cups or any type of cup. Um, you also need one half cup of warm water per color. So because I'm doing four, I'm using two cups of water. If you do more or less colors, you're gonna have to adjust the water and the amount of cups that you need. You also need about one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Again, depending on how many colors you use, you might have to adjust this amount. You will also need a um, mason jar or another clear type of cup to see the rainbow colors in it. You're gonna need um, some food coloring, a tablespoon measuring spoon, as well as a regular spoon or anything else that you can use to stir. And you're also going to need another one and a half cup measurement tool to pour your water in. I just chose another measuring cup. You can use anything. And finally, you are going to need a straw. This experiment could get a little messy, so I recommend putting down a mat or a towel of some sort to cover your surface um, so that your surface doesn't get dirty or ruined. So now that you have your towel down and all your materials ready, let's get started on the experiment. What you're gonna do first is fill every single plastic cup for each corresponding color with half a cup of warm water. Now that you have your water ready in your cups, you're gonna add two drops of whatever color food coloring you want into the cups. For me, I'm gonna do red, green, blue, and yellow. Now that we have all of our colors ready and done, we're gonna go ahead and start to add the sugar. For the top level, we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. For the second layer from the top, we're gonna go ahead and add four tablespoons of sugar. For the third layer from the top, we're gonna go ahead and add six tablespoons of sugar. For the fourth layer from the top or the bottom layer if you want, we're gonna go ahead and add eight tablespoons of sugar. And if you were to do a fifth layer, you would go ahead and add 10 tablespoons of sugar. Once you have all your sugar in your cups, you're gonna go ahead and stir it until it dissolves. If your sugar isn't stirring into your colors, you can go ahead and put it in the microwave for increments of 30 seconds to warm the water up so that the sugar can dissolve. By dissolving incrementing amounts of sugar into these waters, we can already see a change in density. As the blue and the red used to be the same amount of water, now the blue has more because its density has increased. Once you guys are done stirring and dissolving all the sugar, it's time to move on to the really cool part, which is adding all the colors into the jar to make a rainbow. You're gonna start off with your base layer or the layer that you added the most sugar to, in this case, mine is blue, and you're gonna add about an inch of it to the mason jar. Once you've got an inch of that base water in there, we're gonna go ahead and get your second color and we're gonna take a straw and slowly get a little liquid in the straw, hold it to the side of the mason jar and let go, adding more liquid. This is a technique that we use so that the water and the colors don't get mixed up and just make a murky brown, and this way they stay in their layers and create a rainbow. Once you're done adding your second color, it's time to use the same technique on the third and fourth and maybe fifth colors. Now that you guys are done adding all the colors into your jar, hopefully you have a rainbow that kind of looks like this or maybe a bit different depending on the colors that you use. The reason that this experiment is so cool and the reason that it works is because we created different densities with the color water that we used. We had a different, amount of, different amounts of sugar to each color, and when we stirred it together, we created different densities. 
For the red color, we only added two tablespoons of sugar, making the water density pretty low, versus the blue color, which we added eight tablespoons of sugar, which has a really, really high water density. The higher the density of a liquid, the more likely it'll sink. So that's why we have the blue color at the bottom, because it has the highest density, and then the green, and then the yellow, and then the red. That's why this experiment works, and that's how density works. I hope okay. you guys had fun with that experiment. The next thing we're gonna do is a challenge, and the challenge is doing a tinfoil boat challenge. In this challenge, we're gonna be using aluminum foil to design a boat that's capable of holding the most amount of pennies. In this challenge, we're gonna be learning about three different things. Displacement, which is when you sit in a really full bathtub and the water around you rises so that it can make room for your body. Gravity, which is what we experience every day when we throw a ball up into the air and it comes right back down to us. And in this experiment, gravity is going to be, be determined by how many pennies we put on our boat and how much that weighs. And the third thing is buoyancy. Buoyancy is going to be determined by how much weight or how much water is moved by the pennies and the boat. So how much displacement is from the pennies in the boat. For this challenge, we're going to be needing about three materials. First things first, we're gonna be needing some aluminum foil to make our boat out of. We're also gonna be needing some sort of weight. I'm using pennies, but you can use marbles or something else that's pretty small and heavy. And the third thing that we're gonna need is a sink, tub, or bucket that we can fill with water and use to float our boat. All right, let's go on to the challenge portion of this. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is design a boat using tin foil. Before we design, let's go ahead and brainstorm a few ideas. Think about the boats that you've seen, maybe at the beach or the harbor or something, or maybe even search it up on Google. Look at the similarities between them and what aspects of them make them able to carry that much weight. Once you kind of get a hand of how boats work and what is making them able to carry that much weight, go ahead and try to come up with some designs for your boat. It's okay to make as many as possible and just keep doing some trial and error until you get one that you really like and you think it's gonna do really, really well. When thinking of designs for your boat, it's really important to remember that the reason our boat is gonna float is the exact same reason that when we drop a really small rock into water, it sinks, but a really huge cruise boat floats on the water. The rock is heavy, but it only displaces a little bit of water. It sinks because its weight is a lot bigger than the small amount of water it displaces. A huge boat, on the other hand, floats because even though it weighs a lot more, it displaces a huge amount of water that weighs even more. So for my boat, I'm going to be starting with about this size amount of tin foil, but you can use more or less depending on how you want your boat to be. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my tin foil just so that I can have a strong base that my uh, pennies can float on. I'm going to fold it again just so that it's a bit stronger and I know that it's going to be able to hold those pennies. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make the sides for my boat. So I'm going to just fold it over like that and keep doing that on all sides until they're all up. Now that I have my sides up on my boat, my boat is ready to do the challenge. So to start off, I'm just gonna go ahead and add penny by penny until my boat sinks. boat can carry about 61 pennies and the reason that it can float is because the gravitational force or the weight of my boat in pennies is less than the buoyancy force or the weight of water moved by my boat in pennies. Thank, Thank you guys. guys so much for watching these challenges and experiments and I hopefully you had fun and learned a little bit. Um, please check out the rest of the Imagination Celebration for more activities and projects and see you next time!